So hey guys, welcome back to Accelerated Real Estate Investor. Hey, it's Josh. Uh, today I'm excited to be interviewing Jonathan Tuttle. Jonathan has an extensive real estate background um, and experience. He grew up very early in the business and very young in his teenage years, watching his father as a general contractor building over 80 custom homes. Uh, Jonathan was previously the vice president at Miller Chicago Real Estate, which is a leading commercial brokerage firm in the Chicagoland area and also served as the president of Midwest for Yale Realty and Capital Advisors. Uh, recently, Jonathan has been selected by Forbes Magazine to be a contributor to the Forbes Real Estate Council. He's also been featured on 35 national real estate investing podcasts, uh, and has also been selected by the prestigious Cranes Chicago Business as one of the best dressed Chicagoans. He is focused, laser focused on the uh, mobile home park industry and the manufactured home industry. He's been selected to speak on the main stage at the 2020 Manufactured Housing Institute National Congress and Expo. Um, he's one of the leading authorities on manufactured and mobile home park investing. I hope you love this interview with Jonathan Tuttle. Here we go. Welcome to the Accelerated Investor Podcast with Josh Cantwell. If you're looking to retire early with forever passive income, you're in the right place. This podcast is the go-to destination for real estate investors, both active and passive, and multifamily apartment investors, both new, intermediate, and advanced. Now, sit back, listen, learn, and accelerate your business, your life, and your investing with the Accelerated Investor Podcast. So, hey, Jonathan, thank you so much for joining us today on Accelerated Real Estate Investor. I know you're a busy man doing lots of deals. Thanks for jumping on. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Absolutely. Absolutely. So Jonathan, I'm always curious when I kind of meet a new friend, have somebody on the podcast uh, that I don't know that well, first kind of opportunity for you and I to have kind of a deep dive discussion. I'm always curious to see what they're up to today. What is something that they're working on right now that they're really excited about? So tell us a little bit more about what you have going on. Yeah. Well, I think uh, I got the hat to match, but I'm working on recording content for my mobile home wealth academy, which is basically a step-by-step course teaching people how to flip mobile homes and then we have a bonus section where it actually teaches people how to get their acquire their first mobile home park so i'm pretty excited I'm recording even on uh, the holiday weekend all right good deal so uh curious you caught my attention already about flipping mobile homes mm -hmm. right um i've had a few other uh, guys on the podcast to talk about buying and holding and owning mobile home parks yep uh but not too many guys mentioned flipping mobile homes so just give us a little bit more insight to that yeah, well, because I do have a real estate fund that buys and fires mobile home parks, but it's for accredited investors, which is only about 12% of the population. So I'm like, well, doing this podcast and my name's out there, what could be a, a solution for people that want to first get involved in the business and get, you know, kind of teach them the ropes of this kind of weird niche. And like now it's becoming more mainstream, but it's the reason I got into it is like, I just want to have another avenue for people, the 88% of people that couldn't, you know, couldn't, couldn't get involved in mobile home parks. And so the cool thing about it is like, it's for anybody that's more first wants to get involved with the easiest form of real estate. Cause a, like a seventies, eighties mobile home, you get for a few grand, if not less than that, if somebody hands it to you and you, you know, give them a dollar for the title. So uh, it's just an avenue for people that are just first starting it out to get involved with like a really, really simple real estate. It's basically like flipping cars. Cause there's titles uh, there. There's not like hidden, like there is some things you need to know. That's what the course you could do it yourself, but they we kind of real, you know, fast track it because the biggest challenge is basically is um, finding it, finding the, the homes, and then also how to market it, and then also just the, the small improvements, not over improving it. So a lot of people think like single family houses. They see the TV shows. Well, everyone's doing that, and it takes a lot more capital. It takes a higher credit. If you just have a few grand, you might be a college student, or if you're about to retire, you want an avenue to do something really easy. It's mobile home flipping. And nice. like you said, like you said, it's really not a lot of people do it. So it's kind of blue ocean. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, I've done hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of deals. We have 3,700 units of apartments. We've had hundreds of guests on this podcast. Nobody's ever mentioned flipping mobile homes. That's so that's point. a new one, dude. I like it. 
I like it. But I also like the idea that a lot of people want to buy a park, right? And nobody's really building mobile home parks. I was just in Florida. Mobile home parks are everywhere in Florida. Um, And, but nobody's really talked about, well, here's your entree. Here's your way to kind of get into mobile home park investing by just doing a small deal, really small, flipping a, uh, you know, a mobile home house for a couple thousand bucks. Pretty cool idea. Uh, what are some of the minor improvements that somebody can make in order to increase the value and make a profit from a mobile home flip? Yeah, and a great segue too. But uh, exactly that was the whole premise and the concept was to kind of get people, you know, start smaller and then they get into a park and then you start getting into a lot bigger stuff. But uh, the small stuff is better. Less is more. Uh, usually it's minimal habitability. So uh, floors, uh, new carpet, uh power wash the outside, paint if you need to, replace the windows. The cool thing for a mobile home, for example, the outside structure, you don't want to, you can't make improvements to the outside structure, right? like besides paint and you know, improving the windows. You can't just say, oh, I want to make you know a new sliding door or I want to put in twice as big as windows because that will actually make the home collapse. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, so it's mostly minimal. In the inside, you can move walls around and stuff, but it's minimal, minimal is better. So uh, a lot of times it's going to like Home Depot, Lowe's Menards, whatever's by you replacing the fixtures, cleaning up the interior, fixing the floors, painting the interior walls, uh, and just, if needed, replace the appliances. It's literally that simple. It's not like, and it, I guess the best analogy would be it's like arbitrage. So like, you know, like nowadays everyone has like the e stores, which is a big trend thing where it's like, hey, sure. you see the Facebook feed and it's like some a couple of years ago is the fidget spinner, spinner, spinner yeah. spell. Well, the same premise is like, well, people get that stuff from China and shipped over and they just market it better online. It's the same thing. It was not like officially a price. Either. Most people aren't going to go Google and find out like wholesale costs for it. It's the same thing in mobile home parks or mobile homes, I should say, because real estate brokers don't really want to deal with them because of the size of it. They're not going to go, you know, I'm selling 500,000 a house or they want to sell 15,000 on a mobile home. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> so what's the, the commission? They're working on commission. So they don't want to deal with that. They don't know how to price it. And the data in our industry is kind of, we're like 10 to 15 years behind. So even the data aggregators, there's a couple of sources that keep track of prices, but it's not even relevant. It's not really accurate. So it's like arbitrary. So it's the same analogy, like I was saying to the Shopify store where you put it in front of people online. It's the same thing with mobile homes. So you could always make, a, like you should be able to make a five or $10,000 on a small, very, very small investment just by just making some small improvements. And now that home is going to be viable. It's nicer, newer and cleaner. And it's going to be good for another 20, 30 years. Right, right. I love it. And it's something that almost anybody can do. Palatable price point is right. You know, cheap and easy and inexpensive. Um, that's great. So when it comes to your your course, your training that you're putting together, help me understand what's going to be in the training. And probably like we've already talked about flipping mobile homes and then mm-hmm. investing in mobile home parks. I imagine is the two parts. Mm-hmm. Um, but what do people need to know? Give us like if I if I enrolled in your course, what is some of the initial foundational things? that I would learn from you about investing in mobile homes and mobile home parks. Give our audience, let's assume somebody is like, what's a mobile home park? Like, how how do I make money with that, right? A lot of our audience is fairly seasoned. They kind of know, but there's definitely going to be some new people on. Where do they start? What what, what do you teach them out of the gate? Yeah, so great question. So we have a foundation. We go, it's pretty all-encompassing. I bought even the competitor's course to see an idea, gauge what they were doing exactly. Uh, Like, just for example, the bonus content is like seven or eight hours, which is longer than any other courses. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Everyone, we even have like a health component. So like in your mind, your physiology and your biology, correct. And we have like a, a, a higher levels of attorneys that focus on parks. We have CPAs, uh, and we have park owners, park managers, and park investors. And then we also have mobile home guys that are flipping. So we have all this full encompassing perspective. Uh, but it really comes down to just like, we set the foundation, who is a customer? How does the industry work? What's the history? I have like a I think like 25, 30 minutes just background in the history of the mobile home parks from the 40s. Talking about, I even, I don't know if you've seen the movie, um, All the Money in the World. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Mark Wahlberg. Well, that yeah. was about J. Paul Getty. J. Paul Getty was yeah. a billionaire. And what did he, what was one of the main industries he made a lot of money in? Mobile yeah, homes. mobile homes. <laughs> so I talk about, like, so some people are like fascinated by that because, like, back in the day, like, when the first, when the first billionaires and they make movies on today with Mark Wahlberg talking about, and Elvis just sold. Well, you know, he passed away a long time, but his home just sold. So I was talking about kind of the history of mobile homes to how it got to where it is today, how the stigma is. And then I also tell them different avenues to make money, make money with mobile homes, whether it's be wholesale, flipping, uh, buying rent, you know, different strategies. 
And uh, then I have all the contracts and it's very systematic. It's through like a Kajabi course. So it's like, here's the mm -hmm. section. It's really easy to navigate. Some videos will be you know, five or 10 minutes. Some will be like 30, 40 minutes. Another really cool thing I incorporated in there, just because I have my fund and my other, real, other businesses, I have a lot of high-end attorneys and uh, CPAs I work with. So I have like sections of teaching people how to structure like special purpose vehicles. Uh, people aren't familiar with that. That's like a very high level way of how Wall Street buys and acquires businesses and also mitigates your risk. So I have a whole like 20 minutes on that. Invis invisible LLC, let's talk about New Mexico, invisible LLC structure, uh, and just some really advanced stuff. So if people want to go, even though it's like a simple course teaching people how to flip and acquire mobile homes, I was like, why don't I just throw this in here? So if people do advance or somebody is more seasoned, they're getting some stuff that would cost you a couple thousand dollars just to talk to an attorney about. And I'm just like, and I even have the attorneys on there talking about it too, on top of it. So just nice. really cool ways to provide high value. And then the whole premise was that, and then the bonus section of like how to acquire first park, everyone else charges a couple grand for that alone. I'm like, well, I could do it as an upsell, but I'd rather just be like this all encompassing course and really build rapport and really bring value to the, you know, to people that need it. Cause it, at the end of the day, our biggest challenge, you know, especially in the fun side, is the stigma and getting people wrapped around, especially when we're marketing a lot. People come in, they're like, oh yeah, I heard they're good, and, you know, they're good investments, but they don't they need to understand the dynamic. It's a shorter run. It's not, you know, we're not gonna be able to do more home funds in like 10, 15 years. It's you know, supply and demand economics. So kind of getting right. that sound, kind of getting that putting the good energy back out there, teach people about the business and also. What that also does too is the local governance is also one of the biggest challenges too. So we're kind of like getting that sentiment. This is a great investment. Not only that, it also provides affordable housing, which is a huge crisis in America. And so everyone wins. No doubt, no doubt. So for you, Jonathan, like help, help me understand, help our audience understand why would somebody or why should somebody look at mobile homes versus other, other niches, whether it be single family home flips or apartments or self storage or you know, retail and office. Um, help, help our audience understand the economics around mobile home parks, some of the, the reasons, the financial reasons why, and then the supply and demand. We know they're not building any more mobile home parks. Yep. And so supply and demand, that's why it has a short run rate, like you mentioned. So just talk to that about why you chose the industry and why other people choose the industry over other niches. Yeah, great question. So it, it has two sides to it. So like you said, like what makes it really positive is also makes it the hardest to scale. <laughs> yeah. So, so the things that make it really attractive also make it like it works against you once you want to grow. So the mobile home side is just basically a natural tra uh, transition. So I think the reason I had the course is, like I said, like how people that need to learn about it. Uh, and it's a way for anybody to get involved, like comparatively to single family, single family chase. I think you have to have like a 700 credit. Uh, you have to put, you know, at least five or 10% down, maybe 20, depending you know, on your investments. Uh, and so like that amount down, you could have like two or three mobile homes, if not five, depending on your area. Yeah. So, I mean, just really low barrier entry and really easy. And the park side, which we should kind of segue into is uh, the reason I got into it, my dad got in the space about 15 years ago and he was a real estate developer, uh, built about 75 custom homes. So I used to, when I was a kid, I used to work on the job sites and when I was a teenager, I'd fill the dumpsters up with like, you know, the boards and all this stuff, uh, which is fun. Good work, work out during the summer. Yeah. <laughs> and then he also had apartment buildings and other niches. So I saw you know, all the different type of niches. We had office buildings, obviously, and some retail. Um, we had a bowling, bowling alley, a golf course, small, really small in a small town. But I saw all the different things. And when he got into that, he's like, I should have gotten this like 20 years ago. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so he was like, and like right after that was the downturn, you know, the last great recession, uh, 2008, the, you know, 10, 11. Um, and basically it was the highest performing real estate, even... Wall Street Journal had an article last year, came out about January, February last year and said, hey, the highest performing real estate was mobile home parks and it had a tech-like return to the last you know, decade or plus. And it was uh, one of the stocks or one of the REITs had a 4,100% and one had like 2,800% return in the last decade. And then that's when uh, also Blackstone, all these other pre-private equity in the last five years have you know, discovered as well. So, you know, once, once a private equity and the smart money start following it, that's when you know it's in, your, in a good market. So... But the main yeah. thing was uh, really attracted to me was like at that time was like, like I said, for the homes, the same thing, blue ocean, good returns. Um, and just the fact that you're also serving affordable housing takes less capital, but now that's all kind of changing. So we're, we can't allude into something else because now it's like every, all the Wall Street guys are coming in. There's only about 44,000 parks in America. You can't really develop new ones. And goes back to the stigma, the cities lose money 
when they have a mobile home. So if you're a mobile home tenant, which again, this will really benefit when you guys are helping, you know, remodeling these mobile homes is, for example, Illinois, typical mobile home is probably five, 10, you know, 50, up to 50 bucks, or one to 3% of the value of the mobile home. And so the mobile home, and they don't know how to value them. <laughs> yeah. So you're like, your real estate taxes are like a hundred bucks a year, 200 bucks a year. But across the street, you're going to be three, four, five, ten grand, what depends on the size of your house, but at least three grand in like a hundred thousand tiny house, like, or, right. you know, like a luxury house. It's like a really, you know, the average house in America is over 300,000. So a hundred thousand house, single family is one third of that and $3,000 approximately real estate tax, depending on the county in Illinois, because it's really high, but they have the same school, same fire, same police. So the school, the, you know, that's what right. they like it because they lose, they're losing thousands of dollars to have that tenant get the same benefits of living in that town. Yeah, and the mobile home park owner, because the stuff on it is not structure, it's not permanent structure, they're probably just also paying tax on the land, right? So you have, let's say, a 10-acre park, mm -hmm. massive amounts of land, or a two-acre park, or six-acre park, whatever, and the owner of the park is paying very little in real estate tax because it's all land. Then you have the mobile home itself, which is valued more like a car. Yep. They're paying very little tax. And then across the street, there's a development with $500,000 homes or $800,000 okay. homes. And they're paying $20,000 in taxes per house. Yep. Now I get it. I've had a lot of mobile home guys on this podcast. Never thought about that. <laughs> that's why that what well, right there. That's a big deal. That's yep. why these cities and municipalities don't want any more mobile home parks. Exactly. That's why. Yep. 100%. Exactly. Got it. Wow, that's great. Are you ready to automate and explode your real estate investing? We're searching for extremely motivated individuals who are sick and tired of wasting time and want to finally see real results from their real estate investing business. We're searching for investors looking to get to the next level and become a bigger, better version of themselves while being a more successful real estate investing entrepreneur. Apply for mentoring and coaching at joshcantwellcoaching.com forward slash podcast. That's joshcantwellcoaching.com forward slash podcast. Now, why do you think, let me go circle back to uh, the Wall Street Journal article and, mm -hmm. and your own investments and, and, and you know, Sam Zell and a lot of these other guys that have invested uh, in mobile homes. Why is it the highest performing and best return? What, 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 what do you think causes that? Is it just the, the entry point versus the rent? Is it the entry point versus the lot rent? What, what, what makes it the highest performing? It definitely is. I know it is. But in your opinion, what do you think makes it the highest performing of them all? It comes down to supply and demand. It's kind of like there's about 60 million Americans need affordable housing. We know that, you know, even with automation, even with the $15 an hour, it actually helps benefit us. Uh, because that's about 33, you know, the average American makes about 33,000 a year. Half the new jobs created in the last decade are minimum wage. Uh, and like, if you look at the national apartment rent is about $1,200, $1,300 approximately for a two bedroom. And if the national, besides a coastal city, you know, like you mentioned and alluded to Florida or California, some of those, Florida is probably five to 800, depending if it's like a senior, but California obviously has astronomical rent prices, <laughs> Right. but typically it's like three fifty, four hundred dollars $400 for, uh, lot rent for a mobile home. And there was a Duke study from a professor of uh, economics there. And he was talking like the, the rent should be at least five, five fifty for mobile home parks. If it weren't based on inflation from when they were first developed in the 60s, 70s and 80s, they were 50 bucks or 75 bucks. And a lot of mom and pops, you got to think about this small town farmer, Joe, I always use the analogy farmer Joe, because a lot of times they're in second rotation markets. And if they have this thing, they developed this park, they developed it's been cash flowing without even using technology barely records on pieces of paper, <laughs> yeah. you know, nothing's optimized, not even a website. And it's just like resilient just because of the supply and demand. And that's what makes it so attractive is then when you come in as an investor, you could like, that's the big thing why private equities we're liking it right now is because they can roll them up. They can bring in technology efficiencies. They can bring in the QuickBooks, the, the rent managers, uh, they can put up a website. I mean, this is basic stuff, but like we're the only industry, <laughs> like apartment buildings have a website. So mobile home parks usually don't. So yeah, just right. even having that, it makes a big difference when you're like searching like, oh, do I want a 1200 a month apartment or $400? And I own it. Right. Nice. Yeah. Nice. I like it. So Jonathan, when you, 
when somebody gets into uh, buying mobile home parks and follows your system, help me understand what, what is that system? Like, give me the high level. Is it like a three-step process, a five-step process? What goes into somebody starting from kind of scratch? Let's say me, I own a bunch of apartments, but let's say I want to buy my first mobile home park mm -hmm. following your system. Where do I start? What are the steps? Again, high level. We don't, we don't have all the time to get through everything that's in your course. It's obviously right. hours and hours and hours of training, but what are the kind of steps that I, I need to be aware of to take a park from end to end and go from inception, buying it all the way to profit at the end? Yeah, great question. So the first, the first premise is one of the reasons I can't include that. Like it's not fully, fully encompassing. It's probably like four, four and a half hours total for the park buying side, but it's enough, enough steps, enough, uh, information to get people the first break and that's because i could like you said i could have made like a 20-hour course and maybe i'll have that but i just want to have it the reason why is because if you're doing boots in the ground you're flipping at four or five different small mom and pop parks and you're the one fixing up and fixing up these units and making them more equity and making them you know do less work and putting your own capex into it well now you have the relationship and we also know so how is business done it's done by relationships and the smaller parks the brokers right now are in the gold rush right now because everyone, the private equity are going, cap rates are getting compressed, which means the prices are going up and they're focusing on bigger deals. So if you're a smaller park and you're flipping like a 30 to hundred unit park or 30 to 75 is probably the sweet spot for your first park, where it's worth a drive, depending on the proximity to where you live and how much work it needs. But um, that's going to be the deal that a lot of brokers, like the bigger brokers probably won't even take that listing on because it's not worth their commission because like, they're, they're just so busy right now. And there's only a handful of like really good, you know, mobile home park brokers, like just like everything else, mobile home park people neglected it. So the big, and then the local brokers don't know how to do it. And they rather say, Hey, I rather you've been fixing and flipping all these units for the last three years. I know like, and trust you. And I was just like you 30 years ago and just want to get involved. This Now you have that relationship. So you have first access to the deal. We even have a contract that teaches, to do like a seller finance type deal. So then we also have, we have like a private Facebook group where we, we give some strategies how to like network with other people. Cause a lot of times too, what I've noticed too, especially in the park space, a lot of people don't want to do the work. So the investors that has the cash, Hey, I, you know, I've been flipping, you know, mobile homes for the last two years. I have a relationship seller. We're gonna get this off market. Uh, and, and basically you scoop up this deal. That's really, you know, this gold mine is really hard to acquire you provide the cash, I run it, and we could have the legal structure and everything else. And then the for the main thing with uh, mobile home parks is due diligence. So I have a mm -hmm. 45 minute video on due diligence, everything you need to step by step. Uh, and like, and then I even have like a mobile, like a mobile home park lawyer on there. We talk about that too. So the due diligence is the biggest thing because our stuff is a lot of stuff is not seen. Like I give you an example. I saw somebody, I love social media because I have a digital marketing agency, but like some of the stuff you see on there for people trying to sell investments. Somebody put a crap, like a TikTok video, like, don't be afraid to go buy a mobile home park without seeing it. I'm like, that is the worst advice you'll ever yeah. The worst. And a mobile home park, it could be the entire, like the due diligence is where the money is made and where it's not made or you get a nightmare. They, they might, they want to sell it to you if you don't look at it. <laughs> right. If there's right. like the entire, you know, the infrastructure, like you don't see the piping, the, the water lines, the sewage lines are all cracked and broken and you have $400,000 in repairs, but hey, I didn't see it. I, you know, I made a phone call. I bought it on, you know, online. Well, that's where you need to go. So due diligence right. is the biggest process. So we have a 45 minute, like literally like the main things is the water lines, sewage lines, making sure the local government, the, the zoning grandfathers, because a lot of these things are kind of legally non-conforming because they didn't know what to do with them. And the local municipality might like the old like farmer because they grew up with them, but you're coming in like, especially you're like some new investor from another city or, you know, don't pull up and like, we always say, Trust down, don't pull up an electric car. You don't want to look, yeah. you want to look the normal, just like them. You don't want to be trying, drawing attention in a bad way. And especially to a park owner, you want to look, look like you have more money, they're going to charge you more for it. Right. So don't right. do that. So in, basically do the due diligence uh, is the key. Uh, water line, sewage lines, uh, municipality, make sure that the license would transfer over as a mobile home park. Because like you mentioned, they'd rather have the $20,000 <laughs> single family real estate tax, not a mobile home park that's getting less. And uh, just making sure the setbacks. So if you want to bring in newer homes, making sure that they're, you know, that you could actually, it's, it'll still fit in. Like for, you mentioned Florida at the beginning, a lot of those parks are developed in like the sixties. So the mobile homes were smaller back then, eight to 12 mm -hmm. feet wide. And so those, those are kind of obsolete. In the 50, 60 homes were like a lot smaller. Nowadays, even though there's a tiny house movement, people still want like a nice size 
you know, bad. They don't want to have like a, you know, couch is their bed. Right. So those are the kind of things you have to look out for. Uh, but the due diligence is the main thing, getting the right financing. Uh, the cool thing is a lot of easiest way to get financing for parks. Usually if it's a smaller park is that wherever they're, well, it's probably paid off, but whoever the park owner originally worked with in the local town, local credit union or local bank in a small town, they'll usually work with you the best. The rates are a little higher, obviously, but, and once you get bigger deals and you go to Fannie Freddie, which is huge now, the Fannie Freddie loves our space. They've been, because of Duty Serve Act, which is about 37% of uh, Fannie Freddie has to allocate to affordable housing and farmland. And we're the biggest recipient of that. So we're seeing rates the same as like multifamily, if not lower right now. That is for bigger deals, For bigger deals, you know, million and above. That's fantastic. So I know with mobile home parks, some of the ones that I've looked at, I don't own any, but I've looked at a few. Uh, to possibly buy with brokers. And I know banks love the parks where you don't own any of the actual units. You just own the land, lease out the lot. Um, So just talk to us for a second to our audience about uh, what's the ideal structure of a park and not really owning any of the actual mobile homes, right? And if you do, I believe I've been told again, I've never done a deal, but I've been told the best way to do it is to have the actual mobile home parks owned by a separate uh, LLC and separate, get separate financing for that. So the park is truly just the land and you're leasing out the lots and you have lot income with very little overhead. So just talk to that for a minute and where, like you said, going and seeing and not seeing it, going and buying one site unseen you could be buying something where you have a lot of actual units, the actual mobile homes that you would actually be buying with that. It's included in the purchase price. You really have it has to be separate. That's a big risk with mobile home parks that a lot of people don't talk about. So just talk to that for a minute, Jonathan. Yeah. There, every, every business and every real estate has a risk and like there, our industry gets a lot of credit for doing eliminate a lot of it, but there's still risk. And like you mentioned, so like what I, uh, going back to what I said, when you, if there is park owned homes, you want to go through them. So we always recommend, like I said, when you pull up, drive through, say, Hey, my grandma's moving in, my mom's moving in. How's the park? What's go to local police department. Say, Hey, what's, is there crime going on there? What's the type of tenants there? Uh, Like our parks, everyone like the, you know, if the police come through, they love our park because it's, you know, we have rules, regs, it's meticulously maintained and like we're an asset to the city. Uh, but, But you also have like some owners that have kind of ran into the ground. So walking through each unit you can walk <laughs> there was one unit it's on my course too like we didn't we never went in this unit until we bought, bought it from the tenant <laughs> it's like episode of orders oh, <laughs> it's like and it costs and going to what it, what happens is if you're buying that park well it's gonna cost you like five six hundred dollars to get a couple guys to fill up some dumpsters you know and put it on you know, get it out of there so that's if, if there's like five of those that's an extra 25 it's not a substantial amount of money but $2,500 to say if there's like five units that they need substantially clean or they need repairs. And that's another reason why park owners like, even though we're a high cash and cash business, if they're older, they don't want to do like a lot of this work anymore. A lot of times, like I said, mm-hmm. so that's why the, you know, the fixing and repairs is such a you know, key acquisition to help these, these owners. Love it. Love it. Uh, Jonathan, I'm interested to hear more about how you got started. I know you said your dad was in the business, built some custom homes. Um, you know, specifically into mobile homes. Obviously, you could have gone into building and being a general contractor like your dad, uh, building custom homes like your dad. But what were, what truly was it like at the very beginning with your first park, your first investments, and what were some early challenges that you faced? So it was around 2006. I, I got involved with my dad, the first one. So, and I was, you know, I used to tell my friends, like, I'm not, at that point, I was in the suburbs outside of Chicago, and my friends are like, there wasn't even a park in the area. So like mobile home parks, like that's so weird. Yeah. That sounds <laughs> gross. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. And like there, I think it was a trailer trash, a trailer park. Uh, what was it called? Trailer park boys. I think that came out a couple years after. Like, so that's yeah, kind of for stigma. sure. <laughs> and then eight mile, the movie eight miles. So, uh, but like I said, my dad said that was the best. Like, and we noticed from the last downturn. So like, for example, like we, I saw in person, like, if, you know, like throughout my lifetime, but like it literally, we didn't have any problems. We actually were raising rents during the last time. Like when everyone else was like scrambling, the single family was crashing. And what happened was the single family people, they were coming, they're begging to come in because they lost their house. They had these houses they couldn't afford, but they, they made 10 bucks an hour. You could, if you make 10 bucks an hour, minimum wage, you could live in most mobile home parks at that time, mm-hmm. especially. So that was the only place it's that or they're homeless. 
and it's way cheaper than a hotel. So we always have that dynamic. And I just saw that and that's what really drew me into it. So we actually uh, doubled the value of the park during the last downturn. I'm like, this is golden. Like, <laughs> this is great. And then we had, a, there's another big park owner that was in the area. He owned everything. He owned like apartment building. I think he owned a car dealership, a Cadillac dealership. And he owned like a 600 unit park in the next 20 minutes away, next town over. And he was like, hey, just pick up, you, you transport them out. Here's like five units for free. <laughs> Wow. So we got so we got five units for free, which you know brought the value of our park up, you know, about forty thousand per home. So, wow, that's, that's great. And, and I, that's what I forgot to mention what you said in the last. I totally forgot to. I, I was catching my breath. So I totally forgot to say it. But uh, banks prefer, uh, like you said, like the, the units. Going back to that, the more you want to own the land and not actually own the uh, actual homes, and so. For Fannie and Freddie, they want about less than 20, 25 units. And if you don't, if you have more than that, they want to see a game plan. And usually what it comes down to is like Facebook marketing, the uh, marketplace is huge. That's your demographics on there. Even you'd be surprised people like, even they're the senior citizens, like I saw them all the time on there. Like, oh, I saw you. Cause like they use Facebook. That's the biggest yeah. demo growing demographic is the seniors. So like you put on marketplace and they're on their home all day. You it's, you fly out like that. And then, so going back to the other question, because I forgot to fully answer it. Uh, in, in regards to like financing, yeah, Fannie and Freddie, that's, they're really big into like the the land. It's called basically called like a land lease community. Mm -hmm. So that's, Yeah, I love it. Yeah, they, I looked at a park and it was kind of a mixture of park owned homes and, you know, resident owned homes. And uh, we ended up passing on that one because there were way too many park owned homes. And the park owned homes, the ones that I went through, you could tell they hadn't got to them in a long time. Um, and those cans just needed to be basically thrown out and then just wipe the lot clean and, and basically bring in a new, yeah. um, you know, a new mobile home on that spot. But uh, to me, like that, that particular deal, I remember we walked because it was just, it was it, the percentage of park owned homes was way too high. Um, and again, I don't know anything about the, the mobile home park business compared to what you know, but that, that to me stood out. In my newest real estate investing book, The Flip System, you'll learn the proven secrets and strategies that I've used to be a successful real estate investor. You'll also hear the story of my journey from quitting my job to doing over 2,000 units of apartments. The Flip System is now available for a limited time, and you can grab your free copy at getflipsystem.com slash podcast. You'll learn the same proven principles and secrets and investing strategies that I used to quit my job and pursue a life of financial freedom. In this book, I'm sharing exactly how I was able to personally close over 750 profitable real estate deals, make over 400 private lender loans, raise over $30 million, and acquire over 2,000 units of cash flowing apartments. Get my newest book now for free at getflipsystem.com slash podcast. That's getflipsystem.com slash podcast. Jonathan, I'm curious, now that you've had success with this business and you've been, uh, you know, now you're an educator in the business and have an, you know, you're an expert at it as far as own buying them, how to buy them, you put your course together, what kind of advice would you give your kind of younger former self or what kind of advice would you give one of our subscribers or listeners who are interested in mobile home parks? What are some things that you've learned along the way, good, bad, or ugly that you'd like to pass along to them? Yeah. The main thing is just do your research. It's a, uh, it's a little more, it's got a lot of more, more hair in the deals. Like you mentioned, uh, always, if you, if you find a park that has park owned homes, it's going to be, what's your plan and what you could do to kind of test this out before you acquire a park is put up, goes back to that Facebook marketplace or Craigslist ad do a test ad, act like don't give the exact location, but use the area, do a test ad and see how many people, you get 20, 30 people responding and then see if those people responding, do you need finance? Are they saying they need financing or they're cash buyers? And then you could find out what your market is. So that will solve a couple of things. I'll solve to see if the people in the area could be a cash buyer or they need any bank uh, or especially like savings and loans. And the big thing with that challenge is the savings loans, a lot of people, you're dealing with different demographics. So People like compared to apartments, if we're four times cheaper than apartments, people tend to forget that certain people, some of these people don't have bank accounts or they get nervous because they might not have good credit. And so they won't even take the steps necessarily 
to go get the financing. So we can kind of test the market to see who is a you know type of tenant in that market. And like what you mentioned with the new homes, there are 80,000 new homes. So if you're if you have to replace a lot of new homes, remember the most of the products in the 60s, 70s, 80s, you want to see the inventory of the stock and see what the quality of it is or partner up with somebody from the academy to help fix those up because mm -hmm. that could be your biggest liability. Your cash flow could be going out. Yeah, you have this great cash flow on asset, but then you have to fix 20 units when you're not going to be cash flow positive for two years or whatever comes out to be depending on the size of the park. Mm -hmm. And so right. knowing those pitfalls is really like the homes is the biggest advantage, but also the disadvantage. The biggest advantage is once it's off the park, and then the tenant owns it. Yeah, that's why the typical uh, expense ratio for apartments is like 55, 60%. And the typical mobile home parks, 35 to 40 and like 42, 44 for institutional. So the reason is we're not replacing every AC unit. We're not replacing every roof because the tenant does that. Right. So right. the advantage that's the good and the bad. The good is like, yes, what's off your plate. So you have to have a plan and a way to do that. Test the market, kind of. I wouldn't listen to anybody else, but do your own, do your own research, do your own test. Facebook's the easiest way. I throw five bucks on like add 10 bucks. And then you see if you get 20 response. And this like Facebook, just for example, and social media, half the people, it's like a sales funnel. Yeah, sales funnels are big. Now one kind of knows what they are at the top. People don't know who you are, but they're inquiring. Then they want to, then they're kind of moving down the funnel. They're kind of in the decision mode. So you want to have like 20, 10, and like other 20 people, maybe like three or five will be a good tenant. And those three or five people, do they have, what's their background? What's their, what kind of job? So make sure mm -hmm. they have like a, you know, stable job. Like we did some that recently. We just got out of prison. I'm not joking. He saw on a Facebook ad and he's like, yeah, I'll pay 25,000 cash. I'm like, what did you go to prison for? It was drugs. Well, then that's obviously drug money. I don't want to be yeah. doing social. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I don't want them to come back and re. I don't know if there's, what laws are that, but like, obviously he's been in prison for seven years and all of a sudden you have 25,000 cash sitting so, you know, like, Okay. But yeah. so you want to pre-qualify the people. Then the tenants, the neighbors aren't going to want that. Like your tenants are senior citizens. 50% of approximately uh, mobile home park tenants are senior citizens. They usually want something that's quiet, safe. You know, they want to feel, and that's what, another good thing about our issue too, is that the senior, the value for seniors is because compared to like a class C apartment, well, they get to pull their car right up front. Mm -hmm. You know, they have their own little yards, they have some stuff to do, but they have enough privacy. So they don't have people, neighbors above them, below them, kids running down the hall. And then on top of that, they really like, it becomes like a pride of a sense of community. So some communities have like bingo nights and things of that nature if they have a clubhouse, but also those tenants are the best because they're, you always have like some guy who's like a former military or former police guy. And so they basically get free security or free watchdogs because it's their private yeah. ownership that comes with the park if you had senior yeah. citizens. Yeah. It's awesome. Citizens on patrol. Basically, I like it. <laughs> kind of like security, like even when you, I drive through like parks, you could tell who they are because I'll be kind of like looking at them. Like that's yeah. the one that's doing the security, like unofficially. <laughs> yeah, I like it. I like it. That's awesome, Jonathan. Why don't we finish up with our final five very quick answers, very quick questions? Are you ready? Sure. All right. What's your favorite way to find mobile home parks and acquire new deals? Uh, boots in the ground, drive. You got to drive. You got to do that's where the money value is created is get it, rent a car, uh, basic Toyota, a uh, luxury car, or anything like that. Dress down, drive through parks, you know, have your research ready and just have it like a map cross. You're like efficient with time. Nice. Love it. How about your favorite way to find capital to fill up your capital stack to get your deals funded? Online, Facebook ads, Facebook and Google ads specifically. Nice. Love it. Um, how about Jonathan for you, like your favorite piece of advice that you've ever been given or favorite book that you've ever read? Well, that's a tough one. I read, to give you context, I read about 125 books last year and people can't believe it, but I'm like, well, every time I work out five, six days a week and about an hour and a half, that's average audio book. And I do like scribe is a great app, by the way, it's eight bucks unlimited, but they, th they actually start throttling you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> heavy, heavy list. I'm like, can I just pay like 30 bucks a month? Uh, but it's like, you know, you literally get like six, eight bucks a month off them for eight bucks. And that's one book a week. And so I would just do that and I go to sleep with a book. And that's how you get, I mean, you get 52 bucks right off the bat just by working out. If you do yoga, yoga it's different, but if you're doing cardio and weights or whatever, that's one book a week. Uh, my favorite book, I think if we're going to keep it real estate, we could do, and you mentioned Sam Zell. It might be okay. interesting. That was really good because that correlates to what we're talking about. Nice. Love it. How about Jonathan? You know, we're all busy entrepreneurs, had a lot to deal with this past 18 months with COVID. Everybody needs a place to decompress, get away from their business and think, you know, what's your process to think about your business, get outside your business. And where do you go to, you know, kind of take care of that and look around the corner and look for blind spots? Yeah, no, that's a great question. Like normally, I mean, that was, 
it's kind of double edged because normally I would used to be going to sporting events, <laughs> which would be yeah. banned, taking vacations, <laughs> uh, going to like spas, whatever, anything to relax like that. All that's been kind of like was banned for the last year, pretty much everywhere, uh, or taking a vacation. But um, that's usually what I do. Is now that everything's going back up, I like going to Florida. I like just taking vacations, uh, and like usually when I go work out in the morning, that kind of clears my mind too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I love the gym. I was in the gym this morning. I get my best ideas when I'm in the gym. Mine's flowing, yeah. not really thinking about work. And then all of a sudden, my best ideas related to work kind of just kind of pop right in there. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan, you know, you said your dad was an early mentor of yours. Uh, I wanted to ask you who is, you know, the biggest mentor that you've ever had in your life? What kind of impact did they have and why were they so important? Yeah. So like, I think life's a series. I think Damon John quotes as a series of mentors. <laughs> Cause yeah. from different, we get to different levels and different, and then you're always constantly evolving and growing. So hopefully you are. Um, I would say for this business would be James Cook, which is my former business partner uh, before I started the fund. And he's a mobile home park broker, broker out of Florida. And he's one of the biggest guys in the country. And at that time uh, he was so much far Heather, like, I just never seen somebody so technology and like so efficient, like had systems of process SOPs, and just way and meetings with like some of the most successful people I never thought I'd be able to meet <laughs> for investments yeah. and just learning how to like talk to people at a very, very high level and very fluent people. And then also learning technology uh, in US utilization for technology for business growth. And like, I've never seen anybody at that age and he kills it. He does really, really well, but he was my, probably my biggest mentor in the like, last 10 years. Nice. I love it. That's fantastic stuff, Jonathan. Listen, thank you so much for joining us today on Accelerated Real Estate Investor. I know our audience would love to learn more about you, kind of follow up, maybe enroll in your course, invest in your deals. Where can they go to get more information? Yeah, so we have two different businesses, the Mobile Home Wealth Academy. That's just, that's not the sales funnel. That's just like the actual, uh, uh, that'll be the login page, but you could go on there. There's like a sign up form in my case, sign up for first access. By the time this airs, I'm assuming it should be done. I've got about the main thing is video editing. <laughs> yeah. So I, it's not my realm. I have to hire somebody for that. I thought it would be easier just doing screen recording, but then Camtasia has issues. So uh, hopefully I'll be out pretty soon. Mobile Home Wealth Academy in July. Uh, and then for the fund, Mobile Home, or it's Midwest Park Capital. And that's kind of like a general overview of the uh, the fund and the industry. And then Midwest Park Capital Fund.com. That's where you get access if you're a credit investor. You can request more information. So those are three websites. Fantastic stuff, Jonathan. Listen, appreciate all of your background and all of your insight today. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me on. It was fun. So, hey, guys, listen, I hope you loved that interview with Jonathan. I had a great time interviewing him, learning more about mobile home parks, his mobile home park investing course. Uh, make sure you check that out. And, of course, just kind of talking to somebody that's just very candid, that tells it exactly how it is. I found Jonathan to be super transparent and honest about his business and about the mobile home park investing opportunity, as well as flipping mobile home parks. I hope you enjoyed that piece of the interview as well. If you did, don't forget to subscribe, like, and subscribe the podcast, wherever you get your podcasts and make sure that you leave us a rating and review. Let us know how we did. Let us know if you enjoyed this one or any of our previous podcasts around mobile home parks. Thank you so much for being here today and we'll see you again next time. Take care. Hey, Josh here, and do you want to win a free Accelerated Investor t-shirt? All you have to do is give Accelerated Investor, our podcast, Accelerated Investor, a rating and a review on iTunes, okay? Do that now. Then send us a screenshot on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. What we're going to do then is every week we're going to pick our favorite rating and review, and we're going to send that person a free t-shirt and maybe again, some other cool fun stuff as well from Accelerated Investors. So again, don't forget to take a screenshot, leave a rating, review, take a screenshot, send it to us so we know exactly who you are. And then once a week, every week on the podcast, we will announce a new winner. Don't forget to take a screenshot and send it to us so we know exactly who you are. We'll announce a new winner every week. You were just listening to the Accelerated Investor Podcast with Josh Cantwell. If you enjoyed this episode and learned something new, help us build the AI community by leaving a review and five-star rating on our iTunes podcast channel. 
Also, don't forget to subscribe so you never miss another episode. To see passive investing opportunities, visit freelandventures.com slash passive. To start your journey toward the lifestyle you've always dreamed of with multifamily apartments, apply for one-on-one -on -one coaching with Josh at www.joshcantwellcoaching.com.